Happy Sunday. Today I want to show you the factors that shift the demand to the right and to the left. Let's do some math. The first thing we're going to learn is what is the graph of the demand? Where is the price? Where is the quantities? And then what is the slope of the demand and why is the slope negative? Let's do it. So let's say that you want to do the graph of the demand for candy, right? The quantities are going to be in the X axis and the price is going to be in the Y. The demand has a negative slope because let's say that the price is five, you're going to demand four units of candy. But if the price goes up, your quantity is basically going to decrease. That's the reason why the demand has a negative slope because the higher the price, the lower the quantity is demanded. Now, what we just saw is that if the prices go up, then the quantity demanded for that product is going to decrease. And it makes sense because, you know, you're going to be like, well, I, I, I don't want to buy it because it's either too expensive or I don't have the money. But now let's understand the factors that shift the demand from right to left. In this case, my quantities demanded are moving along the line. But now what I want to understand is how you go from this demand to a higher demand or sometimes to a lower demand. So what are the factors that affect the, the, the shift of the demand to the right or to the left? So let's discuss the six factors, which I'm going to try to make them. And I just basically made them super simple so we can go over them. And you're going to understand why sometimes the demand of a product or a service just, you know, increases or decreases. Look how simple. Increase in population. You have more people, you're going to have a higher demand. So you move to the right. The consumer's income, you're making more money so you can afford more. So that's the reason also why your demand moves to the right. Increasing consumer taste for a product. Well, you know, like you, when you have like comic books or things that because there is a movie like Spider-Man and the comic books, the demand increases. And then you can also have, you know, when you have like, oh my God, something's going to go up in price, increasing expectations in the price will also raise the demand. Like sometimes you will buy a product, let's say like you buy a collectible because you are like, oh, I, I know like in two, three years, this is basically going to increase its price. Finally, the substitute effect, like for example, Netflix uh, was able to beat blockbusters because, you know, they just got a better service and better prices. So their demand shift to the right while their demand shift to the left. And then you have the complement effect, which is basically, let's say like the price of peanut butter decreases, then people are going to demand more uh, peanut butter and jelly sandwiches. How beautiful that this graph basically can explain how people react and you can make a relationship with an X and a Y. This is the, the beauty of math, how, how math can basically describe how people are going to behave. Obviously, not everyone might behave the same way, but most people will behave when you have factors like this. You make more money, your demand shift to the right, you know. I'm just thinking that if you understand economics and math, then you can see the world in a different way and it's just awesome and it's just beautiful. So I really, really hope that you enjoyed this tutorial today.